Scratch D, David Noller. I got introduced to uh, David way back in the day with some uh, high school friends, you know. I used to call David up, you know, David had, David was, family was well off. He had 1200 technique uh, turntables, you know, mixer, reel to reel recorder, all the records you could possibly want. And, um, you know, he was a, uh, a real good DJ. And I was like, uh, I'd call him up and be like, hey, Dave, I'm coming to the house. I want to make a demo. Get to Dave's house. Dave's nowhere in sight. Wait outside Dave's house for about an hour, two hours from the show up. And be, just be like begging this dude, hey, man, help me make a demo. Help me make a demo. So that's how he kind of started out, um, you know, as DJing for me. You know, one of the uh, funny things I remember with Dave, I got him to DJ for me up at Club Boca where they were, they were having this rap contest. And um, so we went up to Club Boca, and um, he DJ for me, and we ended up winning the rap contest. And uh, it was funny. Ever since then, we, you know, we start. He helped me out, started making little demos here and there. If I could hear something today, it'd probably be probably be terrible. It'd probably be garbage. But um, that's way before I got into really producing, you know, type stuff. I was just trying to be a rapper back then. And um, David played a big part of that. Is uh, you know, teaching me how to try to arrange songs. I think. And um, what's so funny when. Um, when I got my first chance to go in the studio, I was also friends with this dude named Cooley C, Calvin Puckett. And um, I really looked up to, to Cooley. Cooley had a record out at the time with Luke Skywalker called Cheryl and Donna that was huge. Cooley uh, went to another high school that was kind of rival high school of ours, um, not too far away. And But Cooley kind of took me under his wing and showed me, look, he was the first one to show me a drum machine, an 808. He said, listen, this is how you program this thing. He said, Mr. Mick showed me how to do it. So I'm going to kind of show you what he kind of showed me. And um, I remember Cooley sitting down and, you know, going over the drum machine and trying to make songs. At the same time, now, uh, Scratch D was my DJ. And at the time, me and uh, David submitted some uh, demos to Eric Griffin, Bay Station Records. And we got a good call back. They were like, man, this white boy is pretty good. Hey, let's get him down here and do some stuff. So me and David used to drive to Miami Gardens to Eric's house. Um, and used to practice. He had an SP1200, one of the first drum machines out that you could just change tones with, take that deep bass and just drop it down and make it go low. And I think Eric Griffin was probably the first one to have that drum machine down here. Because I, I remember Cool DC doing the show at the base station and said, man, I don't know what they got, but they got this drum machine. It takes the, it takes the whole bottom, the boom, and it drops, boom, 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 boom. And he came back bragging about this. He said, listen to it. He had a tape of a show they did. And, Eric Griffin and them were rocking the SB1200 in the background. And we were like, wow, ever since we got that, that's when the 808 kind of phased out and everyone got into that SB1200 era. But um, while we were working with Eric, um, Cooley called me and said, listen, this dude named Beware Record wants to sign you. We're going to put out a record. Come with us and let's get it going. You're gonna, you're gonna, it's going to be official. You're going to make a record. You're going to be one of the first white boys in high school with a record out. I told David, David wasn't really feeling Beware and them at the time for whatever reasons. Um, you know, he was like, nah, I kind of like Eric and them. I like the direction they're going in, too, which I did, too. But they were just taking uh, too long to get the ball rolling. I'm like, well, where's the contract when we going in the studio? And they were just still trying to, you know, kind of, you know, we're going to Miami. And I just felt like, man, I got to do it now. I want to do it now. Um, so I called Cooley up and said, listen, let's go make this record. I said, Dave, I said, hey, you can come with us. Um, you can make this record. He said, nah, I'm going to stick with Eric Griffin and them. Well, he stuck with Eric Griffin and made give a DJ a break, and uh, well, you could tell when that came out, I was kind of upset. Cause boy, that, that, every time I walked in the flea market, that's all you heard was give a DJ a break. I was like, you got to be kidding me! They killing them over there, and I'm over here struggling with my little record. It had a little bit of success. It wasn't all that great, you know. Cooley produced it for me, did a good job, um, and Cooley, you know, did the whole thing for me. I wrote it. They took me in the studio and they put it out like they said they were gonna put it out. But when Dave and them came out with Give DJ a Break, it, it just killed it, knocked it out the box. And um, that kind of gave me a little fire underneath my ass to get going and say, hey, it's time to wake up and make some, make some records because you know, I, I can't be left back like this.